All right, uh, welcome back from that quick break. You're still watching Africa's finest breakfast show duty on People's Television. Just last week, uh, Thursday, we had uh, the funeral of over 73 persons who were allegedly murdered by Fulani headsmen, and it was tears galore in Benue State. But over the weekend, we also had another emerging news that uh, a Fulani man was allegedly killed uh, though the, a story not yet completely confirmed, uh, but that puts into perspective our discourse today, which has to do with uh, securing lives and properties, the dangers of self-help. And the question is, have the people of Benin State decided to uh, help themselves by safeguarding them, feeling that the federal government has failed in her duties to protect them and their properties? Uh, just like last week, we decided to bring back uh, Prince Kevin Fineface so that he can let's say finish what he started <laughs> by helping us look at this very very touchy and the national issue as regards the killings in Benin State. Good morning nice to have you back again. Good morning my player. Yeah, good morning. Yeah. Good morning. All right like as if we foresaw today uh, with that news though not completely confirmed but if a man was killed could we put that as one of the dangers of of self-help when the government fails to carry out uh, her constitutional duties of protecting lives and properties? Well, professionally speaking, uh, first let me thank uh, you uh, to be here once more and uh, say good morning to Nigerians. Uh, professionally speaking, we can't conclude on that issue if it was as a result of self-help. Mm -hmm. Some questions need to be asked. What was the issue uh, problem before the death? Were there fights or what, what disagreement resulted to that? And how, why was it that you, it's not been pointed out that the full any person is, uh, you know, killed? Is it an act of um, uh, some form of instigation to incite the people of the full to legitimize what they need to carry out on? So those questions will come up and until those questions have the right answers, you can't conclude on what has really happened, you know, on this, um, alleged debt that you just mentioned, like you also rightly said, it has been confirmed yet. Mm -hmm. And so we need to wait for the reports to come in. Now that brings to play uh, the responsibilities of the different security agencies. Uh, when things happen in a, in, in a sovereign state, there's a rule of law that must take its course. And where the rule of law fails to take its course, you allow the people to resort to self-help and which will result into a state of anarchy. Because when the people lose the confidence in the authorities to um, have redress on the issues, they will resort to self up. And when they resort to self up, jungle justice is the order of the day that you see when it comes to self up. Because the thinking and the fear of those perpetrators will be that if we allow the law to take its course, it will never give us respite, yes, okay. there won't be justice. Even if just judgment will be there, yes. there won't be justice to be seen and served appropriately. So there's that thing. And it also brings to point um, our value system, <clears throat> the value for life and property. What are we teaching our kids? What value system guides us in these communities that we live? In, if you look at it in, in this part of our world currently, uh, lives are no longer as valued as they used to be. Uh, someone can just wake up and maim somebody without even having any fear and say, go to early, we'll make mention of, I don't care, or even do it and wait for the authorities to come, knowing that some way the technicalities of the processes might some way either absorb or give a lesser punishment. So the prisons are there, yes, but they're no longer serving as deterrents, you know, because people don't see it as anything anymore. That is because there is a failure of leadership. So there's a whole lot of shame reaction to this statement you just made. I can go on and on to okay. touch on other areas. It, you know, it shows that the politicians in their responsibility to enact the right laws have also failed yeah, and are not okay. also having uh, doing a research to see the impact and the benefits of these laws that have been enacted, how to create room for reviews. The justice system hasn't also shown the need to show reviews so that to accommodate current realities. Uh, the world has moved on in you know, um, in, in evidence, a presentation in the courts, 
and in our judicial system, the world has moved on. And we have we also moved on, or we still have the same old system. We have uh, a legal system that is taken after the British order, and we're not, we're not in Britain. We're not in Britain. So if we're not in the United Kingdom and we are still having something that connects to uh, United Kingdom, mm -hmm. there's something is wrong with our system. It means we've not been able to tailor to suit our legal system to the peculiarities of our clients. We have our own peculiarities. We have a country that is cosmopolitan, and uh, you cannot pinpoint to one traditional, traditional system that you know, works effectively. Every region has its own culture and tradition, okay. and there is also the ethno-religious sentiments that rise through the fabric of our entire system. It is there in politics, it's there in the security, it's there in judiciary, it's there in the economy. You cannot rule out ethno-religious sentiment in all of these sectors of the economy. So those are the factors, those are the things we need to look at. So as a nation, we need to begin to ask ourselves key questions. They need to sit down and truly discuss our uh, sovereignty and the need for us to stay together. We can't continue to assume that we are a people of same folk that we, are, we can stay together. No, that's an assumption. It, it, we are, we've gone beyond that stage. We've gone beyond that stage. There, there, there's, there's no place you get to. Your name either sells you out or hides you completely. If you, if you have a traditional name, they automatically can box you. The stereotype will come in. If you have a name that sounds like Mohammed Mustafa, immediately someone will stereotype you and box you. If you have a name that sounds like Chukudi, you know, a different, they, they box you completely. If you have a name that sounds like um, uh, Permawe, you know, Ebimobe, they just box you, you know, and that stereotype is real and is a security risk that the nature needs to look at. You said something very key about <clears throat> the loss of value of lives. Now, before the law is even enacted, there has to be an action that probably um, um, disturbed or distorted the peace of the general public. Now, in this case where incessant killings are going on in Benue State and other parts of the state, I mean, you ask yourself, what does a Fulani man or a Hausa man has to do with an Inugu, an Igbo person, that killings are taking place there just because they want their cattle to graze and all that. There was a time I said, it's not right, because it's high time we talk about lives over cows. No matter what, you can never compare lives with cows. So now they're talking about this loss of value, I mean, of your value for lives especially. Years back in the 80s and the 90s, we didn't have things like this, but when the millennium came, just as if an ugly can of one has been opened up. So what do you really think has led to this? Does it have a political tip to it? Is it um, sentiments about, okay, let us, um, there's an, she's an ethnic cleansing, so that this religion is more superior than the other? What really is going on, that these values have just been downtrodden? And everybody knows that what you just said, you know, I, I was actually smiling deliberately because um, there are a whole lot of theories you know, as alluding to all of these things that are happening. You said something, uh, the loss of uh, lives more than a cow. One thing we need to also understand is that when I listen to the Mieti Ala group representative, um, um, alluding to the fact that what happened in Benue uh, was necessary as a result of their disagreements to the laws that were enacted, and uh, in quote, some killings that are taking place on the loss of cow within that environment. They put you know, around two million cows mm -hmm. being stolen and lost or whatever that <clears throat> they've uh, they've had and some loss of lives. It that means that they've taken laws into their hands. He refused to accept that they were responsible for that, mm -hmm. but also said that these things are happening because of the disagreement of the law that took place. You say, I mean, commonsensically, it's obvious that they knew something about so those, it those killings. So shouldn't it be easier for the security agents to effect the arrest? Now, that's where a point comes in. Okay. Is, there, is it that there's some kind of, you know, conspiracy? Okay. You know, because when she mentioned Enugu, you wonder why would, the, you know, full animal mm -hmm. be in Enugu mm -hmm. and some deaths will occur in Enugu. Now, there's some background information I need to give. The Fulani headsmen don't get into any terrain without first getting to seek the consent of the locals of that environment. They get to meet with the, uh, the heads or paramount rulers or chiefs of that community that they intend to settle in. And the period that they will be, I can't say of a fact they do that. It is, it, it is a breakdown of communication 
between the heirs, those who have collected money, uh, and, uh, of the, uh, and the members of that community. Because when the people are not carried along as to why something is being done, they tend to question that act. When you see an edda in your farmland, even if nothing is destroyed, there's that first reaction that you have that will be aggressive to want to show authority of the fact that this is your land. And so in that aggressive mood, the full animal, if he had paid some money for the period that he will use that you know, um, land or that property, we also want to assert his rights in the thinking that, wait a minute, I paid for this. I'm not just, you know, a medicine with a sub or a developer here. I paid for this thing, so you don't have right to question my rights. Where they fail to communicate effectively, both of them, an argument ensued, and one who, who lacks the control, self-control, the restraint, resort to, you know, violence. And in that violence, then there's a, you know, a kind of a retaliation. So revenge, vengeance, you know, revenge, all of this thing becomes a cyclic thing that is ongoing in the country. So you have them in different nucleus, you know, in the country. This is the simple template of what is happening. But now it brings to morality now. Is it justifiable for um, the elders to resort to self-help? irrespective of what had happened, either the loss of life or loss of cow, is it justifiable? The answer is capital no. It is never justifiable because we are not living in some form of jungle where there is no rule and there is no law. We are living in a country where there is a sovereignty that has rule of law. So they, what they needed to do was to go through the process, even if it does not seem to serve justice as expected. But they should be able to have the patience to go to the person to try the process and ensure that they get justice through the process. It is only with that that we can have a sane society. Because when they claim or allude to the fact that it was because of the loss of cow or the loss of life that has resulted to these killings, it means they're also telling other ethnic nationalities or their, their, um, their landlords that they can also resort to self-help. Should there be an encroachment of the farmlands, the destruction of you know, a, a farm that will be programmed to be invested for some form of food security, then those also will also take laws into their hands. Is that what they're saying? I think that's not what they're, they're saying. So you see their act is irrepressible. It's, it's, it's not something I want to actually say, but I think they need to begin to stop forthwith in resorting to self-help. So to answer your question, you realize that we can't run away from those conspiracy. I said earlier that, look, in all, aspects, in all spheres of our national life, in this nation, Nigeria, there's that ethnic religious sentiment that cuts across in the security, in the economy, in politics, in the judiciary. You have that in the legislature is there. We can't run away from that reality. That's because there's that camaraderie spirit when it comes to man that speaks my language or a, you know, fellowship in the same place that I fellowship. Uh, uh, if you get to meet him and he says salam, salam aleikum, or you get to meet him uh, shalom, shalom, there is that tendency for you to align with this person as someone of your own affinity. There is that tendency. It takes someone of a higher intelligence to understand that if there is a system, let's follow the system in respect of a, a you know, religious or ethnic uh, uh, you know, affinity, you know, and to be sane and civil to allow the process to be complete. And so that's why you see that there's an endemic, an endemic, you know, enshrined nepotism, nepotism in this country resulting to the corruption that we're having. Because the, the core bane of corruption in this country is nepotism. Mm -hmm. If we handle nepotism, we handle corruption easily. Mm -hmm. It is because of my brother's place that we have corruption being enshrined everywhere. Or if someone steals and say, oh, uh, the one he stole is not as much as the one your brother stole. You know, there's a comparison. We had last time the, the, the spokesperson of the president, Femi, in addition to that, you know, comparing the number of deaths during Jonathan's time. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. That's to tell you the level of debasement we've been into. It, it, that also shows uh, the, 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 the less value we give to lives. If Femi is actually as smart as I thought he should be, he shouldn't have made that kind of statement, such kind of comparison when it comes to death. You right. know, we should value lives. Talking about statements, uh, last week we had Wale Shoyinka 
uh, make the statement to see uh, the technically the Fulani headsmen have declared war against the country. The fact that they were also killing security agents. Then also we had this former uh, minister of steel in person of Paul Onogo during the funeral, saying that uh, as a spiritual leader of Benin people, he's uh, almost inspired to say they need to raise a million man army to defend themselves since the federal government has failed them. Looking at this comments as a security experts uh, how seriously should we take this comment and uh, which of them is more relevant for looking at the situation we are now you know words um, are not just spoken for the purpose of theoretical expressions okay words are spoken as a result of a deep-seated reasoning mm -hmm. and nobody just says something just like that they say if you want to understand uh, the truth in the mouth of a man look at a drunkard Okay. It gives an opportunity to speak, to say the truth, to reason, uh, but it will be waved under the guise of his drunkenness. He's not drunk. A man that is bereaved does not lose his sense. He still has his senses running through. So what Paul said wasn't out of place. I think the government needs to look into that. And that is to what I said earlier, that when the government fails to take out a responsibility, the people will resort to self-help. What uh, Wale Shoenka said wasn't also out of place. When, uh, when we have uh, people like Erofai, I said that uh, some of these uh, elders are not Nigerians. Yes. Okay. In quotes. Mm -hmm. If they are not Nigerians and they have invaded Nigeria and have affected, you know, to some degree our territorial integrity, because what happened to a state happens to us all. No. The Nigerian state should see this act as an act of war against its sovereignty. But you see, it brings us, it brings us to this um, religious ethnic it's coloration religious. again. So that's why they're not seeing it that way. So those in authority has been adjudged to be part of the same stock of different folks. The Fulani elders, like we said last time, are the same across the belt. Okay. The um, uh, geographical expression makes them look different based on the environmental uh, impact. They might be too black, depending on the equator area they, they're in, or too fair, uh, depending on uh, the tropic of culture they're in. So they know themselves. They are so bonded. And that is why it will be difficult to, for, for the government of today to proscribe them as one security threat. Rather, sentiments will be uh, brought into play to say, oh, these people are just you know, pastoralists that are trying to survive. Why don't we all uh, accommodate them? And so the government, in our wisdom, is coming up with colonies as to ensure that these people live in colonies. But let me say this. Uh, you know, in, um, in, in reality, and of a fact, the Fulanis have always lived in colonies. They have always taken a place for themselves right from time that I get to know myself as an adult, mm -hmm. that you know the Aosa area and you know the Fulani areas. Mm -hmm. They are not the same thing. Mm -hmm. they, are always, they are always isolated from the entire community. They have a small emlet where they stay with their cow and little emlet they build for themselves. So we go in there to buy fura or, uh, uh, or nunu, rather, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that, or cheese. You know, we go to this place to, to get this. And sometimes, some of us even go there for medicinal purposes to, you know, um, um, to go seek their knowledge in terms of this. Thing. So those colonies have been existing. So what government is trying to do now, it's not new. But you see, the approach with which they are going will result in another security threats because government is coming brazenly now to want to acquire lands for these people within this community. It is not the best time to come to implement this because there's been these threats and um, um, distrust in the polity as a whole concerning these folks or persons. What I think government should do is to fast track the process of ranching. I saw what um, Acquire Bomb State did with ranching. Brought in some, excuse me, brought in the grasses from Mexico and have some partners to partner with. And he has this hectares of land already been done for ranches. Now that is a government that is thinking way ahead. Meaning if the full any elders come into a state, it will immediately direct them to the ranch area. Because they don't just move their cows from north to south 
they ferry those cars. They, they transport them through uh, trailers or trucks. We see them on the road. Yeah, yeah. Then when they get to a particular location, they can cover a particular geographical expression. Sure. Okay. They do that. So if they do that, we need to begin to make preparation. I think all of this is also another economic boom for this nation, for especially states that have low IGROs, internally generated revenues. So they, they can, they, focus, on they can focus on that, seeing that um, this business is a business that is really generating so much of uh, 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 crime and all of that, killings and stuff like that. They can look at it and create a enabling environment. And these elders will not become elders, uh, will not become investors, rather. You know, because if they create a neighborly environment, the elders from across the West African or East African belt will not, oh, there is an enabling environment for us, so we will not have to suffer ourselves that much to come and invest. So they will come and invest in those enabling environments that have been created for them to add their cattle and other uh, uh, animals they have in their folks. And so when that happens, it will generate revenue because taxes will be paid. There will be a value chain. Uh, there will be ice and skin. There will be cheese. There will be milk. There will be meat. The bones will be used for different things, ceramics and all of that. So it's all, there's all of the economic benefits with all of this crisis, right? And it is because of lack of foresight on the part of those in authority that this world is becoming politically, uh, you know, a shy thing. It's not supposed to be like this. If there's a political will... There's nobody, no militia group has the capacity to undermine the sovereignty of a state. It is because of lack of political will, which is as a result of ethnic religious sentiments that we are seeing this and know that are those who benefit from all of this crisis because they are to give the opportunity to supply materials, relief materials, you know, for those that are getting into IDPs, you know, and so we, we can't rule out that conspiracy. Yeah, too, too. There are those who also see that as a way to score cheap political gain or relevance. And someone has said that autumn is not relevant because of this whole thing, because he had the low rating before now, now because of some of these things. So we, those conspiracies are there, but those are petty and myopic. See, I just explained to us the economic benefit that this whole thing has. Now, there's something I need to say in, in close to this point, is that we also need to understand that the Fulani folks simply operate like the caste system of India. Okay. Those headers are headers who must remain so. so. The owners of this cow, these heads, don't go to the field. They are not in the bush or other places. Now, the elders need to maintain their integrity because if they lose any cow, it will affect their lineage because then they will know that they are not responsible to manage this thing. So they can be tagged as a family that doesn't know how to manage cow, cannot protect their cow. And so in the future, their children will not have the opportunity to add cow. And that's why some of them will do anything to protect their integrity. So even if it needs to show that, yes, when this thing happened, this is what I, I this decision I took. So those that are on the car will back them up. If you arrest them, they set them free. When Nebo case happened, there was an arrest in Kogi that was done of one of those who was, who was involved in the killings in Nebo in Nebo State that confessed to the killings and had a video clip of the killings in Nebo. What has happened to that young man since his arrest? The case is dead. So it brings us to this point. What is the media doing to follow up with stories yes. as they emanate? The sentiments we, we come and sell the papers, sell the news, first, you know, breaking news and all of that. And after that, everything dies down. That is because those also who are reporting can't be absorbed from this ethno religious sentiments with political patronage. Okay. All right, <laughs> well said. Now, uh, media, your guilty has charged already. All right, <laughs> over the weekend, we had a very disturbing story about uh, the new DG of uh, NIA in the person of uh, Ahmed Rufai Abubakar saying he's Chadian, he's got two passports, his Chadian passport and a Nigerian passport. He said he failed uh, the promotional exams twice, uh, that is in the NIA. And uh, because he, he was trying to avoid being dismissed, he, he resigned in 2013. Looking at this this issue that cropped up, how worrisome is this, especially as we look at this headers issue? The fact that the NIA boss, his nationality is is in question. Good good question you ask, but who is going to answer it? Uh, the um, immigration will need to come and tell us that. Okay. We need to see his birth certificates. We need to see his local government um, 
identification. Uh, we need to see all of those things. It's primary schools and all of that. Was it vetted before he got, got you know, getting the job? And there are also stories that he actually upgraded from civil, uh, the yeah, state, civil so state civil service to the federal civil service from level 12 to level 14, which was in variance to the laid down yeah, rules and procedures, procedures yeah. you know, for such kind of thing. It brings us to this same point. We cannot run away from this reality that comes with uh, Nigeria to some degree. It seemed to be a conquered land with the conquerors, you know, uh, you have the conqueror and the conquerors living together. Nigeria hasn't been a country where you have everybody has an equal right and equal opportunity to aspire to become anything. It, is always, it has always been a case of religious or ethnic sentiments in gaining places of authority or position of authority. And so if this man has been alleged to be this, um, morality, Common sense. If look, if we live in other climes where civility is the order of the day, uh, and these allegations are yeah, true, true, the man will honorably resign. But you know what? He won't resign now. In the first place, why would the president even appoint him as a DG? From if this man tough. is from his place, we have to look at our appointment based on federal character yeah. provisions. You have the DGSS from your place. You have the, the NIA now from your place. You have all of this move from same stock place. So it, it will create some form of insecurity in the hearts of the other people of this nation. Other ethnic nationalities begin to see themselves as not being part of this Nigerian state. And guess what they will do? They will begin to internally work out their own salvation, their prevention, their protection. They will begin to do things to undermine the system. Wow. They will begin to look for a way to empower their people that have you know, gained entrance to some of these places. They will begin to create unnecessary uh, 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 um, situations that will frustrate the collective well-being of this nation. Is that what we need? Why do we need to make, make an appointment that will generate unnecessary sentiments or cries from the people? So it tells me that the president and those around the president are not really putting their, uh, their thermostats, uh, um, no, their, their thermometer rather, yeah, yeah. Okay. you know, on the pulse of this nation to know what needs to be done per time in order not to create this unnecessary decision. Yeah, the president can say to her, I don't give a damn. I need to appoint those that can work with me that I know we deliver. Failing promotion exam does not necessarily connote that the person is not intelligent. Okay, that's like an administrative bottleneck. It's sometimes created to ensure people really work hard to attain to certain positions. Question you want to ask, how was he able to grow from the first rank to level 12, if it was level 12? You know, it could be that he was too busy and he couldn't read for the exams and he failed the exams. It could be. Okay. It could also be that because of his stock, knowing that... Somebody was trying to stop him from uh, Maybe somebody maybe failed him deliberately. Because you can't know that fact. It's a conspiracy. It could also be that because he knows that he's of the royal blood, maybe, and he's a full animal, that one day this thing will happen. Maybe he has seen the, the future that he's going to be the DG, then he will prove to them that even if I failed my promotion exam, I'm now your DG. So all those who, you know, uh, uh, maligned him, yeah. abused him, will suffer. Mm -hmm. Like we saw what happened in one other agency. All those he perceived to be were responsible for his ouster, uh, they are being punished and they are being dealt with, you know, appropriately. So we have this uh, vengeful tendency in our system. It's also there in the politics. You know, you see that Nigerian politics is riddled with uh, vindictiveness. Mm. That's why we're not making meaningful progress. So a government is, comes in. Is, is that part of what Dasuki is suffering? Yeah, that's what part of it is suffering. I mean, when we know of the fact that Dasuki was one of those who, you know, put uh, the current president on ass arrest. I mean, it was, uh, yeah, that's the truth. The truth yeah. You know, it was one of those who put him on ass arrest, yeah. and uh, he suffered greatly in his hands. But unfortunately, Dasuki only carried out an action, that, an order that was given to him by his boss, yeah. the IBB. Yeah. But nobody's saying anything about that. IBB is there in Mina, mm -hmm. living well, but that's okay, he's suffering. Mm -hmm. that's, why, that's why it's be difficult for those in security agencies to carry out their functions effectively. It is a result of what we're having in Benway. Because in what is happening in Benway, that happened in Nebo, happening in Taraba, Adamawa, is purely a security failure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Somebody should lose his job. The heads of security in those states should have resigned or be removed from that office. There's a local government chief in every local government. There's a DPO in every local government. There's an area commander in every local government. Why can't these people 
gather intelligence that would have forestalled that act? Or was it that, as part of the security mechanism, architecture that trying to form, mm -hmm. they wanted to allow for some level of this, you know, uh, 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 happiness so as to get the attention of the government, you know, because sometimes uh, you can't get absolute peace. Mm -hmm. There's an element of insecurity that can be allowed to allow for the people's consciousness to be alive, mm -hmm. or else you would think that security is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. You know, so they allow for this thing to happen. Well, Maybe that's some I'm kind of tricky that I'm giving here, yeah. yeah. but that's what is happening. But must we allow for such level of collateral damage yeah. to take place before we can do anything? Must the president ask the IGP to relocate before he re relocates? Mm -hmm. A common sense the IGP should have been there himself yeah, yeah. to say what's happening here. Yeah. Sack the whoever that is there or remove him, bring another person to say he can't be here and this is happening. Since you are failing your intelligence gathering, we'll take all of you out of this place. He comes in there and ensures that security is seen to be provided to the people of Benoist because that is his core responsibility as the IGP of this state. The DGSS is supposed to also ensure that these people are doing what they're supposed to do. They've been doing a fantastic job. We see them. We report the reports in, in Port Harcourt prove that security can work effectively if they really want to work effectively. And that is when they know that the interest at art is against the state and it's of their interest, then they do something. Must it be so? No. It means that there's absolutely absence of professionalism being practiced in Nigeria, which is a major security threat. And it will result to anarchy. Because that's where self help comes in. All right. Uh, my two final questions are, as we wrap up, one of them has to do with the religious leaders. Do you think uh, they've also failed us in terms of what they preach to their subjects, both from the Islamic point of view and also from the uh, Christian faith, then it, do you think it's now time for police, <coughs> state policing with what is happening? Can we bring in state policing Okay, the um, what we're facing right now? Religious leaders. See, Tony, there's something you're, you're not getting. Religious leaders are from the society. They have an ethnic nationality before their faith comes into play. And so what is the going um, understanding with that environment that they grew up from, what mindset did they have before they became religious leaders? What type of indoctrination that they had? That's the only thing they will say. You can't give what you don't have. So these religious leaders are not, you can't absorb them from all of this crisis. What kind of teaching do the full animal have concerning life and property? What kind of teaching does a Christian have concerning lives and property? Have they been encouraged in their teaching as to if government fail to come in? I am who I am today as a result of my parental upbringing, quite frankly, before my faith. My father had taught us the need to value lives and to be honest and truthful. In fact, we wake up with songs like, if, if you want to be a great man, a, a, a clever is the boy that wants to be a great man that he lives in, in truth and in honesty. Many are the labels of a clever man who wants to become a great man. A clever boy wants to become a great man. Those songs we are given, yeah, folklore are given. We have stories, tales by moonlight, an opportunity to instill and infuse certain values to us. The Totti story, the rabbit story, those are values that were given to us that we grew up with. Do, are we doing that now? No. no. We are exposed to TV, our kids are exposed to technology to be trained. But this person, so what they know, they see shooting in the TV, they practice it in real time. And so when they get to church, the pastors or the religious leaders only preach what they know will keep the people completely in tune and enslaved to their teaching so as to get their benefit. Religion is the biggest undoing to, to humanity. Religion has made us to lose our humanity. So we need to begin to teach. Humanity, humaneness is the key thing that every individual should do. That as you are, so I am. So I need to respect you. So if you offend me, I should tell you in a way that you should understand you have offended me. And not resort to proving a point by committing a crime. What's the second question? Uh, looking at state policing. State policing. Is, is it time for state now, policing? There's this argument that says that, oh, uh, because of the way the attitude of the politicians, we cannot uh, allow because they will just abuse it. Now, look at what's happening. Any state that is able to control the commission of police, you know, or the SSS or other security agencies, they give them enough money, they use them to, you know, uh, deal with their uh, opponents. Op opponents. Of course. 
you, you can't rule that, that, that out. Okay? Why is it so? It also brings me to the point of absence of professionalism in our operational pattern. And also brings me to this point that you and I failed to take responsibility or to take advantage of the opportunity that democracy brings. Democracy affords the electorate the power to be a kingmaker. Your vote, your, your vote, your voting, your, your voter's card is the most powerful tool in a democracy. It's the only legitimizer of the office and the occupier of that office. Have you come to that understanding to utilize it to ensure those who go take this responsibility are duly qualified and will be able to do what is necessary? Where they fail, we recall them. So I think we need to go back to the drawing board and ensure that our voters' card, the power behind it, is utilized effectively. So that, that way we can begin to implement state police in the open. Some states already have implemented state police. Go to the north, they have the East Bar. Right? Yes. In the religious uh, north, they have the East Bar that they form people who carry out religious uh, uh, policing. Yeah. You go to the west, you have different uh, uh, vigilante groups. You know, formed in East, there was a time the vigilantes were formed to uh, pursue the Bakasi uh, people and all of that. You have that in the South, you know, although in the South they are not being so coherently formed. So that's state police already. These are people who provide security. There's no community in Nigeria that they don't have some form of vigilante to protect that community. But it looks like uh, Benue doesn't have. No, they do. Because we saw uh, the military arresting, uh, apprehended some of the people with arms and they said they are vigilante people. We also heard the Nongo say they're going to uh, generate about one no, million, no, you know, I mean, I mean, to, to do that. So state police are already existing. So let's uh, see, let me tell you the truth about Nigeria. Nigeria is a country where the political elites and the followers live in hypocrisy. These things are happening, but they don't want to accept it. So everybody pretend that nothing is really happening. And so some of them come to the open and speak just to make sure that their stomach is sustained. It's what my people call poker, <laughs> longer throats. That's what is killing us. We can change with all of that. Let's be real with ourselves. Let's be more humane in our dealings with people. Your religion should not be an offensive thing to me because it is your sole responsibility. And so don't see yourself as more superior to me because of what you have. Well, see, when you die, you're all getting there with nothing. Empty you came, empty you will leave. So Let's I, be human. Yeah, I just want to throw in a quick question. You know, it says something about the local chiefs and the fact that most times when Fulanis go to a new place, let me bring Benue State in focus, they actually last with these chiefs, give them a certain amount of money, and they start grazing and all that. Now, when it comes to these chiefs, because they're like the gateway to Benue State, what can really be done to like um, kind of adjust that? Because it is mainly because of like four or five years back, there was this issue of the Fulanis that had this fracas with some tea people, and they said, don't disturb us, go and meet your chiefs and settle with them, because we have settled them. This is confirmed, because I was in Benue at that time, and the person speaking with us was actually amongst the people that had this conversation with the Fulani men and all that. Now, in this case, what can really be done? What can the state government do to probably, I don't know, bring certain measures or certain sanctions to this um, 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 negotiation between the chiefs, the local chiefs, and the herdsmen that will now like, prevent most of these things that we've seen, the Benue killings and all. You know, um, I said something about hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. um, we, have, we run a federation. We have a federation. We have a type of federal system of government. Mm -hmm. uh, but we also have, you know, in need, infused monarchical style governance. Mm -hmm. Is it right? You have a federation. You have a monarchy. Mm -hmm. You have kings. Okay. Operating in the local oh, governments yes. and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. You have chiefs, and you now have a federation. Mm -hmm. So there's a conflict of interest where the different governments, the different government existing, the monarchical government and the federal government existing, is trying to want to show some level of supremacy. Mm -hmm. So the chiefs and kings want to show supremacy within that domain. Mm -hmm. And so, but they can't function effectively because the government is the only legitimate authority that will give them the staff of office. Yeah. So what they do is to, when it comes to political need, they align themselves to the government of the day, irrespective of who is there. So we need to begin to understand that our democracy needs to be reviewed and tailored to suit our 
existing structure that has been bastardized by the influx of the imperialists, they will, the, the, the supremacists who came in and bastardized our system. We had a, a traditional structure running before they came in. They introduced our system and brought in this conflict of interest. So you see the chiefs collect money because everybody is hungry. And so they have lost their moral values. Once money is dangled in front of them, I know of a fact also that when the, the elders encroached on your farmland, you, all you needed to do was to collate the level, of, the level of damage done and report to the nearest colony and they will, they, will, they will address it. Though they might not give you all the money that you need, and that's also because the farmers might not necessarily be so sincere, truthful, honest with the presentation of the damage that is done. You know, when there's oil spill in the Niger Delta, where I'm from, Everybody go and buy nets and say that uh, the, the, the oil spill has damaged their nets to lay claims, <laughs> okay. you know, uh, as a result of this d damage. Then everybody have farmland within that environment, even if it's mangrove and nothing is happening there. And so you see the same thing happening, even where there's no destruction of uh, cattle in the farmland, they will destroy, even if they have harvested all the crops, they will still go and destroy the say, my elders, my, your elders okay. destroy this place. So is this insincerity that has resulted to this Kone man die, Kone man bury him, excuse my language. And so you see this cyclic flow of, you know, a dishonest arrangement. So the chiefs collect money in the, court, in the hope that because they are chiefs. But being a chief does not make you superior to everybody. You were only appointed or elected from amongst the people to represent their interests. Now they became chiefs or kings and they just believe the others are their subjects. No. Your, your shift I see is not, doesn't make you superior to my being. It's just that we needed to have a head for, for somebody to relate. And we, we thought that you are, you are uh, honest enough, you'll be honest enough, and you'll be sincere to present our case. But now, unfortunately, you're not doing so. So what is happening is actually failure of our moral values, that the chiefs collect money, do not relate same, or show navigational pathway for these elders to head their, their cattle. You know, they don't, they don't show the clear pathway. What stops this locality? What stops Nigeria as, as, as a sovereign state to formulate a template that can be adopted and adapted to a locality? That this is a template. When you come to, when, a, when they come from anywhere, like I said, they come from abroad. Uh, they don't know where they're coming from. They came from abroad. When the elder comes to a locality, this is the first point of call, the gateway. So the others also, this information is also disseminated around. So when they are going to any place, they know how to communicate. So this is the first point of call. No, we, are, we have 1,000 heads of cow. And this, this is their vaccination result. Because every cow is supposed to be vaccinated. And so in fact, there's a whole lot of things. The veterinary committee is supposed to also be very relevant in this one matter. Every cow is supposed to, every animal is supposed to be vaccinated before you get into any locality. So that we don't bring Ebola. Because if this will travel this way, they don't bring sets of fly. They don't bring all of those diseases, uh, uh, white, cow, white cow disease and all of those things. We're not coming. It is because of the failure of leadership. There hasn't been a leader in this country who has the foresight as to see the economic and security uh, challenge to this world experience as it relates to They've only seen the political advantage that the crisis comes in they can, it will create this um, uh, uh, uncertainty, then there will be voter party. And when there's voter party, the few persons that are there, they can buy them over. And then they win the election, they move in. Don't forget, this whole thing can't also be ruled out from the 2019 forthcoming general elections. Because yeah. there are interests that will be, create unnecessary, you know, scenarios, uncertainty, insecurity in a given environment. You have only a few persons to vote in that environment. So those who might be against the government, will not be there to vote because then they'll be chased out as a result of the gross insecurity. Then the government day takes the day, or another government comes in. So we, okay. uh, we can't rule out all of these theories. Let's just wrap up uh, this uh, <coughs> discussion with the question. Uh, since Meiti Me Allah has said the cause of these killings is because of these harsh laws, would you suggest that something be done about this open be uh, grazing bill? Anti-open grazing yes. Should there be a adjustment so as to get peace? Since See, Tony, let me, let me, I think I understand your question. Let me cut you short, interrupt you in that. 
Mutiala lacks the moral rights to ask a state mm -hmm. to repeal or abrogate his law. They don't have that right. What they would have done when this open grazing bill was going to be uh, 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 debated on the floor of the Bailey State House of Assembly, they would have, with even without invitation, follow up with opponents to know when this uh, bill will be discussed and present their own take and mobilize their people or leverage with the Bene people, show them potential based on the relationship they've had with them in the past in terms of their transactional relationship. I said, look, we have been existing together all this while. We have no one really, in case, let us know how this, and mobilize them and leverage their support. I said, let's not allow this bill to go on. I had one of the fine young men from the military, Allah, you know, well-spoken guy, mentioning that, look, there would have been righteous first before the implementation of the law. Okay. That's why they are fighting that. The, the government would have implemented the righteous first. Don't forget, during Jonathan's time, 100 billion, about 100 million was released mm -hmm. by CBN for, to all the states to build ranches to accommodate the value chain that comes with uh, cattle rearing. What was done? Have you ever reported that? Have you investigated? Go and do your findings. It's there in the open. 100 billion was released. Who is held accountable? The National Assembly during Tambowa's time investigated this, set up a panel of, they say, to investigate this. In, the report was never submitted. So did you see where the problem is coming from? We need to begin to ask certain questions. Why you should do that is because as a citizen of this country, it is as a result of your legitimate voters card that these people are there. We don't run a despotic government that you will say, okay, it's military and so that it's a democracy. Let's ask the questions that we need to ask. Stop pouring blames. So the military Allah does not have right to ask Benue State to abrogate that law. What they can do is to go to court. And it does not give them the impetus to take laws into their hands. It is, it is, it is, it is a boring to hear them say that the reason why... And they're even asking for compensation as of the That the reason why that uh, this what is happening is because of the Ash law. What the heck? Excuse me. Who gave them that authority to become a law an authority, a sovereign, a sovereignty in a sovereign state. Does it mean that the people of Benue should also say, because of what you are doing, we don't want to see you anymore and defend themselves? Would that be anarchy? Would it be wise for the people of the Mirti Allah group to follow due process, lay a complaint? How many of those killings we are reported in the police or those uh, cow theft? We are reporting to the police. Do they have a proof yeah. of uh, police reports to, see those cows to those things that were missing? And if there were, if there were reports, what was the police findings to that? See, we cannot just come to the press and give figures to whip sentiments. I ask questions. You said two million cows, heads of cow, stolen, missing, two million. Two million. No, it's possible. Maybe they are counting from 1940. Maybe. It's very possible. Okay? But these two million cars that were missing, were they reported? If they were, what was the findings from the police? We saw the president last year or so. It was in Zamfara to flag off anti cattle rustling. The military entirely. It was in Iskamu. And it was there to flag off cattle rustling. And that was one very good move made by the president to help to forestall cattle rustling because the rustlers are not only Nigerians, they are also foreigners who come in to rustle this cow. In fact, the foreigners know themselves, that is their trade. They do dog shop meat dog thing, forgive my language. You know, they, 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 so if these things were not reported, then how would they come up now to lay this claim and ask for compensation? If these things were, we have done, what measures were they taking in, in partnership with the security agencies to protect, prevent? These occurrences. If there were deaths, were they reported? You are supposed to have death certificates to show so that we can also know the number of persons we have in this country, not to be given a figure of 180 million Nigerians every now and then. We are not even sure of. You know? But if you look at the number of telegencies that we have, 143 to 144 million telegencies that we have, you want to show that maybe it's true. 
that is about 180 or more. But do, must you go with these speculations? See, there are a lot of questions we need to ask. Why can't the Nigerian states, the all the security agencies, start profiling others and their account? Then, in partnership with Veterinary Council, to ensure that every cow in this country is registered. Because that is the most ideal thing to do. That is the only way you can actually have right value. That's when you will know when there is an, uh, there is, uh, uh, any uh, sickness that is coming in, if there is anything that is coming in. That's the only way you can tell to trace and to, to track down and uh, you know, completely take care of if there is any ailment or anything that is coming in. That's the only way we can also know our per capita you know, income from this other's business to know the, the type of eggs and skin that we'll be getting from this business, to know the type of milk that can be exported or that will be infused in our baby milk, mm. you know, and then we can do local production. That's the only way we can know if we can begin to, you know, compete with France with cheese and start making different types of cheese. That's the only way we can know if we can begin to have some very quality uh, ceramic from the bones or hard works from the bones. That's the only thing we can know. If you know we can use the bones as part of uh, you know hardcore for our roads, so that we can have lasting uh, you know roadways. You see, the value chain is much. I, I can go on and on. You know, if, when you take off the hoof, those things are raw materials for other purposes. They burn so fast. That's the only thing we can know. We have uh, they don't even have incinerators that helps in burning this. And you go, they use tires. The, uh, has not that gone there to see how the the, uh, the abattoir, as they manage this uh, cow that we eat. Is, is it like Nigerians, we all are religious people. Thank God for God saving us, or else yes. we'd have been all dead with poisons <laughs> that we're eating. What about if the, uh, the Miyati Allah people start it's poisoning their cow? Start poisoning their cow right? And sell it into the market. What do you think will happen? All right. That's something we're not thinking. Ah. A lot of danger <laughs> across. Uh, <laughs> when he speaks, you can virtually see all the danger signs on the wall but a uh, very very sad story a lot of questions need to be asked in order for us to get the right answers and also prefer uh, lasting solutions ahead for the future so that nigeria can be saved very very worrisome but uh, i hope the security uh, experts and operatives in the country have listened and listened good uh, uh, prince kevin Feinfeld taking us to all the dangers of self-help and what nigeria face uh, is going to face if things are not done right but very very wise on this course and uh, we hope the relevant authorities are listening and will do the needful that's how we call it a wrap on africa's finest breakfast show my name is anthony momodusin thank you for joining us from 7 30 till this very moment and everyone done <laughs> has the last words um Hemba Dong, Bande, we really appreciate you staying with us up to this moment see you tomorrow another beautiful and memorable day good morning good morning <laughs>